All right, so this is the, the start of the multiple comparison or threshold or statistics image section of the course. And we, of course, need to start by uh, just doing a quick review of type 1 and type 2 errors. So make sure you're ready for this. You should already be familiar with hypothesis testing. This has been covered earlier in the hypothesis testing lecture. So maybe revisit that if, you're, if you haven't already watched it. So just some review, what's the null? What's the alternative? And what are the steps for carrying out a hypothesis test? So you should already know these things. The null is typically that there isn't an effect. The alternative is that the effect goes either positive or negative or just simply non-zero. And then the multiple steps for carrying out the hypothesis test, we need to come up with a statistic, and then we need to come up with a null distribution, and then we compare our statistic to the null. Anyway, I'm going to step through those here. So step one, define your null distribution. So here I'm showing you a T distribution. The null is almost always centered at zero. Um, probably for the majority of the hypotheses you'll be looking at. And then you need to define some type of test statistic. So here I have a T statistic and its value is where the star is. So then what you do is um, p values are the probability of no yeah the probability of observing our statistic or something more extreme uh, given the null is true. So given the null is true means we're working with this blue distribution, the null distribution. So that addresses the given the null is true part. More extreme, now to figure what more extreme means, you have to look at your alternative distribution, um, which is typically uh, one-sided for imaging analysis, and so in this case it's going to be greater. And so this is it. So it's the area under the null to the right of our observed statistic. And what do we typically compare this area to? So this is our p-value, and we typically compare this to 0 0.05. So what does the p-value mean? So if I have a p-value of 0 0.01, what does that mean? Um, it means that if the null distribution is true, or assuming the null distribution is true, the probability of observing my statistic or something more extreme than it is 0 0.01. Um, importantly, it is not the, it does not reflect the probability that the null is true. Uh, perhaps you saw I posted a thing on the Mumford Brain Stats Facebook group a little bit ago about a study in Spain. It has nothing, nothing against Spain. Um, it's just that's where the study was. And they looked at, I think it was Spain, how frequently scientists misinterpreted the p-value. So they did a survey study. And it was a little sad. It was, um, it was pretty common for it to be misinterpreted. So don't let that happen to you. So what does the p-value threshold imply? So that's what we're going to focus on. Today, I don't think I really went into this before, but we choose 0.05, just, it's a, just a historically driven choice. That means that if our p-value is less than 0.05 and we reject the null hypothesis, so that's what we use. Greater than 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So note how careful I am in wording this. I don't say we accept the null hypothesis because in frequentist statistics we can never accept the null hypothesis. If you do something like Bayes factors or something like that with Bayesian statistics, so there's a really good article I also posted on the Mumford Brain Stats uh, Facebook group about how um, in this reproducibility crisis paper, somebody went through and used um, Bayes factors to assess the studies. And for that, they actually compare the null distribution. So the probability that the null distribution is true to the probability that the um, alternative distribution is true. So that's really cool. But only in that case, if you're doing something Bayesian, can you tend to get at something like, you know, what's the probability that the null is true? Okay, so the type 1 error is that assuming the null is true, the probability that we reject the null. So that is our 0.05. So this means that 5% of the time we'll have a false positive. So now if you just run a few, a handful of tests, this isn't a huge deal. 
But in reality, with our imaging data, we're running hundreds of thousands of tests at once, so it becomes a big deal. So here's the interpretation. So you'll see this two by two table a lot. Um, the columns are what we know. So these are the, what we see from our test results. So you either declare an oct a voxel active or you declare it inactive. Again, this should be um, fail to declare it active. But then what we don't know, the truth, um, whether it really is non-active or active. Right, so let's pretend an oracle told us these values for the rows so we could fill it in. So let's assume we have 1,100 total voxels. 100 voxels actually have signal, so the null is false. And 1,000 voxels have no signal, so they're null. So that's what we, the oracle has told us. So we have 100 active voxels, 1,000 non-active voxels, and 1,100 voxels total. If we have 80% power, and I'll talk about power much, much later on, probably definitely after the course has ended, but I'll, I'll revisit power. But if you have 80% power, that means of your active voxels, you're going to detect 80 of them. 80%, which in this case is 80 because we had 100 voxels with signal. And we missed 20, so oh well. The 80, this is power, and the 20 corresponds to type 2 error. And again, I will talk more about type 2 errors later on. If we use a 5% type 1 error, which is pretty small, we're going to find 50 false positives. So we're going to have 50 um, findings that we think are, according to our test, are activation, when in reality there isn't any. And then 950, they're fine. So this 50 falls into the type 1 error category. So our goal is to control, oops, filling in the rest of the numbers here. So we have 130 active, 970 active. So our goal is to focus on controlling this number. So the next lectures you see in the series, I think there will be about five, are going to focus on controlling this number in different ways. So there are different ways of controlling error rates. There, are, I should say there are different error rates that we can control. So I'll be going over those, but primarily the goal is to keep this number down. Um, you'll see in an illustration I do next time, especially when we smooth our data, and our data are smooth, but if I simulate data and smooth them, you'll see that these non-active chunks, they can be really realistic looking. They look like brain activation. So. Just to recap, if you run enough tests, you'll find something significant. And it doesn't mean it truly really is significant. So the example I always give is I used to work for some pulmonary surgeons, and they were trying to see if they had 20 quality of life measurements, and they were trying to see if, um, I think it was something like emphysema, so degree of emphysema activity impacted quality of life. It probably wasn't emphysema, but something like that. So... Um, they just said to me, they're like, oh, I have 20 quality of life measures. Can you just see if any of them have a relationship with this emphysema measure? I was like, sure. So I ran my 20 statistics or my 20 tests, and one of them was significant. And I was like, oh, one was significant. And we just shrugged and said, oh, well, I was very lucky. These doctors were not... Um, they were not data miners at all. They, they, if you told them something didn't work out, they just moved on, which is a huge gift when you're consulting. But anyway, the point is, by chance, if none of those quality of life measures showed any relationship with emphysema, by chance, I expect one of them to be significant. So since I only found one that was significant, we just moved on. We didn't make, um, you know, we didn't throw a party about it. So. That is not unusual, so you have to be careful. So make sure you have all that. Um, do you know the definition of type 1 error rate? Hopefully you do. Hopefully you know what your p-value is. Don't, don't uh, make the mistake that so many scientists make. And what are type, why are type 1 errors mo more problematic with imaging data? That one's easy. Um, all right, so thank you very much. Please join the Facebook group, which is just at Mumford Brain Stats after groups. And have a great day.